Hello everyone, this is Dr. Mihir Shah once again with another video. In this video, we are going to solve university question paper of the subject strategic financial management, which was asked in April 2023. Okay, now this is the very first part where we will be solving question number two. Okay, so all the questions with option which are there in question number two will be solved in this particular video. And the next question will be solved in the coming parts. Okay, so this is the very first part whereby we are going to solve strategic financial management April 2023 university question paper. So let us start with the very first question which was asked. Okay, it is given that under question number 2a, uh, Butter Limited provided you with the following information. The earning per share is given as rupees 18. The rate of return expected by investor is 12%. The internal rate of return was 15% and they are asking us to calculate the price per share by Gordon's approach if dividend payout ratio is 25% and 75%. So whenever they give you a dividend, dividend payout ratio, we will have to solve it according to that. So now they are giving you two situations here. One where the dividend payout is 25% and the other is 75. So let us start how to solve this particular sum. First we will be taking up the sum where the dividend payout is 25%. So we have written out here number one dividend payout is equal to 25 percent after that we'll note down the formula of gordon's approach so v that is the price of the share is equal to earning per share that is eps into one minus b okay upon ke that is cost of capital minus b into r okay so b is basically your nothing but your retention ratio r is your rate of return k is your cost of capital okay or internal rate of return you can use that same word and EPS is earning per share. Now we have all the values except this retention ratio. So the very first thing what you need to do, do is find that particular value that is B. That is the retention ratio. The formula is B is equal to 1 minus the dividend payout. Now dividend payout was 25%. So it will be 1 minus 0 0.25 which is nothing but 0 0.75. So our value of retention or the B is 0 0.75. Now since we have all the value, earning per share is 18, B is 0 0.75, cost of capital is nothing but internal rate of return which is 15% and R that is rate of return by expected by the investor is 12%. So, okay, so all the values have been given to us. Now just let us substitute in our main formula. So here V is equal to EPS, so EPS is 18, 1 minus uh, the retention that is 0 0.75 upon ke that is your cost of capital or internal rate of return which is 15 percent minus b into r that is 0 0.75 into 0 0.12 okay now once we substitute now we'll just solve that so it will become 18 multiply by 1 minus 0 0.75 will give you 0 0.25 the 0 0.15 as it is when you multiply 0 0.75 into 0 0.12 we get 0 0.09 now we multiply the numerator and we subtract the denominator we'll get 4.5 upon 0 0.06 final we divide it and we'll get the price per share which comes to rupees 75 per share okay so this was as per the dividend payout ratio of 25 percent now similarly we'll have to do for 75 percent so dividend payout 75 percent formula is the same eps into 1 minus b upon ke minus b into us so we don't have the b we'll first find the b that is 1 minus the dividend payout so 1 minus 0 0.75 which comes to 0 0.25. Now we have all the values. We substitute in the main equation. EPS is 18 into 1 minus 0 0.25 upon 0 0.15 minus 0 0.25 into 0 0.12. Okay. Further solving it, we come to get we get the value as 18 multiplied by 0 0.75 upon 0 0.15 minus 0 0.03. So again, numerator we multiply, denominator we subtract. We get the value as 13.05 upon 0.12. Finally, we divide and we get the value as rupees 112.5 per share. So this is how you all had to solve the very first sum which was based on Gordon's approach. Okay. I hope everyone have understood how to solve the first question. That is question 2A. Now alongside, this was 7 mark. Alongside the 8 mark question was, let us check now. Okay, this was the question, question number 2b. Akshay Limited is considering new projects for investment. 
the two alternative investment proposal are project red so we have project red and project blue the cost of each project is estimated to be 75 lakhs so your investment cost of investment is 75 lakhs the inflow from the projects are given so we have been given four years cash inflows of four years now the current yield on government security is eight percent so that's like your risk-free rate of return is eight percent and the premium for project red is five percent so five percent extra so eight plus five that comes to thirteen percent so for red company or the for project red the rate of return or the discounting rate will be thirteen percent and project blue it is seven so eight plus seven is fifteen so for project blue it will be 15 percent always remember whenever they give you government security and they give you risk premium you add up those percentages and you will get the actual discounting factor rate okay now which investment should you uh, should be preferred by akshay limited they have asked you and they are giving you discounting rate at 13 percent and at 15 percent now remember 13 percent was 8 plus 5 which is for red and 8 plus 7 is 15 which is for blue so the 13 percent is for red 15 is for blue now, in order to solve, so first, first you solve the red project. So we'll note down project red. Okay, now the column is very important. Okay, the very first thing, number of years. So we have one, two, three, four. Okay, next we have cash inflow, which is 30 lakh, 22 lakh, 50, 17 lakh, 50, and 15 lakhs. Third column, you need to note down your PV factor. That is nothing but the discounting rate at the rate of 13%. So 0 0.885, 0 0.783, 0 0.693, and 0 0.613. Last step, we need to find something called as the present value. Okay, now base, first of all, the sum, when they ask you to find which one you should invest and when they give you a discounting factor, they are expecting us to find the NPV, that is the net present value. The one which has the highest net present value will be awarded or will is the decision, you know, the investment should be made in that particular project. So now we need to find something called a present value. Present value is nothing but cash inflow multiply by PV factors. So you just have to multiply these two columns and you will get a last column called as PV. So 30 lakhs into 0 0.885 will give you 26 lakh 55,000. 2250 into 0 0.783 gives you 1761750 and so on. Once you get multiply all the four value, get the total. So the total comes to 65 lakh 49,000. After solving the table, now we need to get the NPV. Now NPV ka formula is the total PV minus the initial investment. My total PV is 65 lakhs 49,000 and our initial investment is 75 lakhs. Okay, so your NPV will be total PV that is 65, 49,000 minus 75 lakhs. Okay, so you get basically a negative. You get a negative 9,51,000 ka NPV. So I'm just putting it in a bracket here because it's a negative value. Okay, now same way we'll have to find for project blue. So project blue, columns again years, five, four years. The value is 4250, 2750, 20 lakh and 16 lakhs. PV factor, now we'll take the 15% car rate, okay, which is 0 0.870, 0 0.756, 0 0.658 and 0 0.572. We multiply, we get the PV column and the total. The total comes to 80 lakhs, 7700. Once you get the total PV, we can apply into the formula of NPV, which is NPV is nothing but total PV, which is 80 lakh 7700 minus the initial investment, which is 75 lakhs. So when you subtract, you get a positive 5 lakh 7700 difference. Now the question was, which investment should be preferred by Akshay? Now it can clearly be seen that the red project is will take you for a loss of 9 lakh. But if you go at Project Blue, you will get a profit of 5 lakhs. So the final answer, you will have to give a comment stating that since the NPV is positive of blue, okay, which is 5 lakhs 7,700. So it is preferred that Akshay should invest in Project Blue. So this is how you all had to solve question number 2B. Okay, I hope everyone has understood. So this was question number 2A and B to get the 15 marks. Now along with that, there was an OR. Okay, so it was A, B or A, B. Okay, so now let us see the other half of those, the remaining two questions under question number two. So I hope everyone have understood the first two questions, which were contained, which contained 15 marks. Okay, let us see the options. Okay, under option, again, you had 2A. So it's given here, Perl Limited has an earning per share. So EPS is given 15 rupees and an equity capitalization rate, that is cost of capital is given as 
10%, the company has an option to adopt either 40% or 60% dividend payout. Again, similar dividend payouts are given to us too. One is 40%, one is 60%. Compute the market price of the company's quoted share as per Walter's model. The very first sum was based on Gordon, now this is based on uh, Walter's model. If it can earn a rate of return of 15%. So, the rate of return is given as 15%. So, first we will take uh, dividend payout at 40%. We will note down the formula. So, the value of the share or the price or market price of the share is dividend plus R, that is rate of return upon cost of capital into earnings minus dividend the whole thing upon cost of capital now remember they are giving you earning per share in order to find dividend the formula is very simple the formula is dividend is equal to earning per share into dividend payout ratio okay so in our first case in our first case when the dividend is 40 percent earning per share is 15 so 15 into 40 percent will give you our dividend value okay so if we, if we have to solve, this would have been basically 15 into dividend payout would be 40%. Okay. So, we would have cut this the zeros. Okay. Then we had 5 twos are. Okay. 5 threes are. Uh, we would have had uh, five, uh, 2 ones are, 2 twos are. So, 3 twos are 6. So, my dividend would have been 6 rupees here. Okay. So, let us see taking dividend as 6. Okay, we will apply that into the formula. See, all the values are given. Dividend we found, it's six, uh, rupees 6. Rate of return is 15%. Cost of capital is 10%. Earning is 15 and dividend is again 6. And again, cost of capital is given to us as 10. So, substituting those values, we get 6 plus. Okay. We get 6 plus rate of return 0 0.15 upon 0 0.10 into 15 minus 6 upon 0 0.10. Okay. Now, further solving it, we get the value as 6 plus. Now, when you divide 0 0.15 into 0 0.10, you get 1.5. Okay. 15 minus 6 is 9 upon 0 0.10. Further solving it, the numerator, it would have been 1.5 into 9 plus 6. So, that would come to 19.5 upon 0 0.10. Dividing, we get a final value as 195 rupees per share. Okay, that is the value. Similarly, we'll have to find for uh, the 60% dividend payout. Again, formula is same D plus R upon KE into E minus D upon KE. Again, dividend, it will be 60% of 15 rupees. So, 15 into 60%, we would get the value as 9. So, 9 plus 0 0.15 upon 0 0.10 into 15 minus 9 upon 0 0.10. So further solving, we'll get 9 plus 1.5 into 6 upon 0 0.10. Again, we multiply, we add, we get 18 upon 0 0.10. We divide and we get a final answer as rupees 180 per share. Okay, so this is how you all had to solve the sum based on Walter's model, which was under option question number 2A. Okay, the or option. Okay, now one last question now. Let us see the last 2B, how it was. The fourth question under question number 2. So 2B, it was a little lengthy. The question was a little big. Uh, Sandeep Limited is considering one of the two mutually exclusive proposal, Project MI and Project CSK, which requires an outlay of 76,50,000 and 86,25,000 respectively. Uh, the, certain, uh, so the certainty equivalent, that is CE approach, is even used in incorporating the risk in capital budgeting decision. The current yield on government bond is 8% and considered as risk-free rate of return. Okay, 8%. So basically, that will be your discounting factor in the sum. The expected net cash flow and the certainty equivalents are given. They are giving you cash flow, they are giving you CE, and they are giving you 8% ka discounting factor. Okay, for three years. So now let us again the funda is simple. You have to find the NPV, but using the certainty equivalent approach. So first for project MI, the columns are very important. First column we note down years, which is one, two, three. Cash flow. 40 lakh, 50,000, 45 lakh and 50 lakhs and certainty equivalent which is 0 0.9, 0 0.7, 0 0.6. Now very important. Now once you note down that, you multiply multiply your cash inflow with your certainty uh, equivalent. So 40 lakh, 50,000 into 0 0.9, okay 45 lakh into 0 0.7 and 50 lakh into 0 0.6 will give you a new cash inflow. Once you get the new cash inflow, 
okay note down your pv factors which are given as 0.926 0.857 and 0.974 once you note down the pv factor very simple like the previous sum cash inflow the new one which we found multiply by pv factor will give you a present value and we require the total of that so the total came to approximately 84,56,820. Once you get the PV, we apply to the formula of NPV. So it will be total PV, that is 84,56,820 minus the initial investment, which was 76,50,000. So when you minus, you got a difference of 80,68,6820. Uh, 80, no, it is 8,6820. Okay, that's the difference. Similarly, now we'll have to go for CSK. Again, here's cash inflow, the you know certainty equivalent that they are giving you. Multiply, we get a new cash inflow. We note down the PV factors, multiply, and we get a total PV. Once you get the total PV, that is 93,86,335. Okay, we need to subtract the initial investment for project CSK is 86,25,000. So we minus it and we get a difference of 7,61,335. Okay. Now they said you are required to suggest the company as to which project should be accepted. Now as for the NPV, okay, both are positive. So they both are profit making. But among the two, the project MI fetches you 8,6820. Whereas project CSK fetches you 7,61,335. So based on the highest value of NPV, project mi should be accepted that would be your final conclusion okay so i hope everyone have understood these are the first four questions under question number two under the paper of strategic financial management april 2023 i hope everyone have understood okay so this was a part one of our video series based on solving 2023 april paper Okay, stay tuned for other videos, okay, where we will be continuing this paper and we'll be solving the remaining part of the uh, university paper. So I hope everyone have understood. With that, we will be ending this video here. Thank you.